This week on Tasty Utah, we're bringing you the tastes and flavors of Italy right here in our own backyard. We begin in Ogden and stop by Sapori Italian Bakery and Cafe, where husband and wife Luca and Azzurra decided to open a scratch-made Italian bakery offering specialties from their home country of Italy. Then we travel to Cottonwood Heights and visit Carmenes and another fabulous husband and wife duo. Carmine is definitely crafting the Italian love of food in every single dish he prepares, while his wife and co-owner Florida is saturating every inch of the restaurant with true Italian-inspired hospitality. We're so grateful for all the efforts of these amazing restaurateurs to keep their doors open and continuing to offer us community by inspiring our palates, putting love in their food to keep our hearts hopeful, nourished, and full. Taste Utah is more than your typical food show. It's about local flavor, from roots through authentically Utah restaurants. It's the people and the places that make Utah a dining destination. There's so much soil and earth to uncover and still so many great Utah restaurants to savor. We bring you the stories and we spread the love. The best thing about Utah, the views along the way, they're not bad either. We're not afraid to get our hands just a little dirty. Food is a necessity. It's how we create it and share it and experience it together that truly shapes our community. Whether you're choosing to dine in our dining room, order to go, or get delivery, you always have a seat at this table. Are you ready to taste Utah? We're in Ogden, it's a beautiful day, and we're heading to Sapori Bakery and Cafe. Sapori is owned by husband and wife team, Azura and Luca. They immigrated from Sicily, and they are offering Utah a true taste of Italian bakery. They've got sweets, they've got savory. We're about to go get our Italian on. Are you ready? Let's mask up. Hello. How are you, Luca? Hello. It has been a long journey from Salt Lake City, and we have been wanting to introduce the people of Utah to Sapori Bakery for some time, and here we are. Thank you very much for coming. We're so excited. My wife, she's waiting for us there at the table. Okay. We made a lot of stuff we would like you to try out. Please, let's go. Twist my arm. Let's do it. Lead the way. Luca, your beautiful wife, Azura, you weren't kidding when you said you had some sweet treats at the table. Everything is 100% authentic. Okay. Uh, so whatever you see here, it's what you can find wherever you go in Italy, in a coffee shop, in a cafe, in a bistro. We got some tiramisu made with the Lavazza coffee. Yeah. We have a fruit tart with fresh fruit. Uh, we make the shortbread, it's really good, battery, light. Yum. And the profiterole, even if it's a French dessert, it's kind of an Italian one now because, again, this is something really popular uh, there in Italy, if you well, go to bakery. And in Europe, all of the countries there sort of take from each other what right. works and what doesn't work and put your own flair on it, or your own spin on it. Mixed traditions uh, all together. And um, I love it. Yeah. What is a profiterole? So profiterole, it's basically cream puffs filled with Bavarian cream. Oh, Ooh. in this case, it's filled with uh, whipping cream and yes. topped with um, uh, chocolate ganache. And then we have these beautiful, it looks like biscotti. This right. one is a cassata. It's cassata. the baked cassata. We used to make this one on uh, Easter. Okay. Uh, yeah, and it's shortbread, and inside there is a sweet ricotta cheese and chocolate chips. Oh. And, and this one is uh, typical of my town, Palermo. Mm -hmm. And this one is typical of Naples, it's a sfogliatella. Okay. It's a shortbread, inside there is a sweet ricotta cheese, orange cinnamon, and semolina flour. Semolina flour. Yes. Ricotta cheese isn't just meant for the base of a lasagna or something like that, right? You can make it sweet. And, and in fact, it's in a lot of sweet yeah. dishes. So there, here we got what we call the fazzoletto. This fazzoletto. Right? Okay. That will be translated like napkins folded. 
Oh, it's wow. basically like a pocket of puff pastry uh, filled with our um, handmade uh, orange caster orange caster cream. And these are our biscotti, Love just it. made with almonds and they're beautiful. Oh, this one is um, um, lemon mousse cake. Uh, the base is cookies okay. and, and the lemon mousse cake and jelly. And then um, that looks like a sweet crepe. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> what we call the fruta crepe is just fresh fruit and some yogurt. Okay. And there's a little bit of cinnamon on top. Beautiful. And then here, this is what we call Genovese because it's made using some of the basil, Genovese basil pesto. Mm -hmm. And there's diced uh, roasted potatoes, bacon, and parmesan too. And mozzarella. And mozzarella. mozzarella. The, the thing that's really, I think, inspiring about Italian cooking and just Italy in general, that's very regionally specific. Yeah, that's right, that's um, right. We really love our uh, Bolognese sauce. Uh, Bolognese, as the name says, it's originally from Bologna, okay. one of the cities in the north of Italy. And it's basically, we make it from scratch, from this so-called so sofrito, that it's a mix of three different vegetables that we fry and will give the tomato sauce that natural flavor okay. without adding anything else than just salt and pepper. And obviously there's some ground beef and pork. The bolognese, it's a process, it's yeah. a labor of love. Yeah, it's a slow cooking process that can take even up to six hours because since you won't add any artificial flavor or ingredients to the right. tomato sauce, you know, you gotta stay there for a long time in order to get thick, creamy, and rich as flavor. When you come in here, you learn, kind of like what we're saying with European cuisine, similarities, but then you're able to really discern with your palate the distinction between a fazoletti or an apple turnover. Yeah, because some of them, they may look even similar, but when you, when you try, when you give it a try, then you will really understand the difference between them, for sure. It's just such an amazing offering. Oh, thank Why you. Why Ogden? We lived in Sicily for 20 years, then we moved to Tuscany when we lived 12 years in a small town close to Florence. And that's why probably our cuisine, it's a little mixed. And um, so basically my wife, she has part of her family living here. They moved more than 30 yeah. years ago. Oh my Three goodness. cousins. Exactly. So she came to, yeah, she came here like four, four years ago. And since we always had a dream like this, we, we, want, we want to have a place like this, honestly. And it's really hard there in Italy uh, the, because of the politics, because of the financial situation. So all of her cousins started telling him like, uh, why don't you try to open this Italian bakery here? There are so many Italian restaurants, but we don't know any Italian bakery. And so we started thinking about it, and uh, here we are. <laughs> and we are so grateful, because who would have known that literally one year ago, right. almost like to the day, our borders were shut down. Mm -hmm. You are literally bringing Italy to us. So I understand that you make Zapole? Yes. Right. Which yeah. ha happens to be a personal favorite of mine. Um, and that you might invite me back into the kitchen, or let's be real, I'll just invite myself. Oh, you um. sure. <laughs> sure. Of course, we want to do that. Yeah. yeah let's go not? make some Zapole. Yeah, yes. let's go. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So, Zora, we. We ditched Luca, it's just the ladies in the kitchen. Now you're gonna teach me how to make zeppole. Zeppole is a typical treat of Naples. They are made just with uh, simple uh, ingredients. Okay. Just butter, uh, water, uh, flowers, and eggs. All it's, good things. Yeah, <laughs> it's a right balance between the ingredients because uh, if it's at the end, if it's too soft, you can't fix it. And so there is one tip in okay. order to understand if the dough is good or not. Okay. Uh, bring the dough with uh, the spatula okay. and do this one. And if there is a triangle, it's okay. It's good. So this looks like it's, it's hitting the money, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> these, these, could you say these are a little reminiscent of donuts? 
Oh no, it's completely different. Inside is empty. Okay. Uh, because the, uh, they rise up in the, in the oven, okay. uh, thanks to the eggs. Okay. And so it's crunchy um, yeah, okay. on, uh, outside, yeah, but empty uh, inside. Okay. In fact, you had to fill in with something. Something. Uh, original one, the authentic one, is with uh, custard okay. inside. Custard on top okay. and one cherry, and that's it. Oh my goodness, so this is almost like a pastry shell that we're creating. Oh. Kind of, kind of go like a beignet, except for left. Oh yeah, fried. it's the same dough. Yeah, same uh, dough. Okay. Yeah, the the zeppola, um, you can bake or uh, deep fry. Deep fry. That's so yeah. cool. All right, so you're gonna um, you're gonna put this into a piping bag, basically. Yes. Okay. And you can play with the filling. Yeah, and it's like you almost want yeah that nice neutral so that you can decide like maybe I'm gonna add a little. I mean, you could almost do like savory zeppola, or would that be like a sin? If you want, like, you, know, <laughs> you, can, you, could do, you can do that yeah. because it's a neutral. Um, in Italy, we use also to do the bignet yeah. with um, uh, salsa tonnata, that is a tuna sauce. Oh, yeah, yeah. that sounds amazing. It's like a tuna yeah. sauce. Yeah. Great. Oh, so Et pretty. Voilà. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Okay. Now we're just going to do. Oh, those are good, and that's a good size. Yes. I love it. And different shape, it's the beignet. Okay. And different shape is the eclair. Oh, it's I love the it. same for three different treats. Oh my goodness. Do you want to try? I would love it to. <laughs> so which one should I make? Which, what this do you? one? Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> It's perfect. Like that? Yes. Yay! <laughs> Should I do one more? Sure. Okay. One profitro, one beignet for the profitro. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. And one eclair. Okay. And that's it. Boom! Zora, this has been such an educational, it's just so fun. You're such a delight. And you and your husband have created this oasis in Ogden where not only can you sample Italian fare, but you can really feel authentic, true Italian hospitality, which is heart and soul. And you're putting that into the flavor of Ogden. And we just appreciate what you add to our Taste Utah community. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's a windy day, but we are in Cottonwood Heights and we're headed to Carmine's. Carmine's as someone might call it, but in authentic Italian language, Carmine's. We're going to sit with Florida and her husband, Chef Carmine. They're gonna to talk to us about Italian cuisine, what it's like to come to Utah and open a restaurant. Maybe touch a little bit on COVID, but um, first, we gotta mask up. Let's get ready to manja, shall we? Good morning, Katie. How are you oh, doing today? Lord, I'm so, so excited to be here. Welcome to Carmines. Oh my goodness. This is a first for me. So I'm really, really excited to learn about all of the different ways that you're bringing Italian cuisine to Utah. And we are happy to have you here today. Yay. Chef Carmen is waiting for you in the table. Oh so if you follow me, please. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Florida, when you said that Carmine is waiting at the table with uh, an array of amazing treats, you were not kidding. Carmine, this spread is, it looks impeccable. Will you just situate us in what we have going on on the table? Of course. And I'm gonna take my mask off. I can tell this is risotto and I'm gonna manja. <laughs> okay. So let's start with uh, this dish. It's uh, eggplant parmigiana. Ooh. We cook the parmigiana and fill it up in the fresh mozzarella. We make our own mozzarella. Okay. We stretch the curd, fill it up with the eggplant parmigiana and the tight like a bowl, in mozzarella bowl, with the fresh oh basil goodness. and uh, grape tomatoes. So almost the same technique as like a burrata when exactly, you're stretching it. Exactly, but inside oh, okay. with the, the parmigiana. The parmigiana, oh, that's so amazing. And speaking of um, burrata, I think I see some right here. Yes, okay, it's a good. rather there. This is a one on 
Uh, Arab potato is uh, burrata with uh, melon and prosciutto. This is very traditional. It's very traditional yeah, in Italy. Beautiful. Yeah. We have a caprese salad, just fresh tomatoes and uh, our, our homemade mozzarella. Here, like fettuccine allo scoglio, it's fettuccine pasta with seafood. We, we use mussels, clams, uh, tentacle, calamari, shrimps, lobster and lobster sauce. It's oh uh, was the most popular dish in our menu. Um, People love it. And this looks like a beautiful uh, It's lamb. lamb. Okay. It's lamb chop with roasted potato, asparagus, some artichoke with lemon. We, it's pretty simple dish. We, we cook the lamb with just salt and pepper. Uh, that's it. Like the, the whole way, like the way that uh, we used to be in Italy. This is a uh, egg pappardelle with wild boar sauce. It looks you know? beautiful. It looks with... almost like a ragu. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. Yes, it's beautiful. ragu with wild boar. Mm. We have a lot of risotto in Italy, but on the, in the restaurant I have just this risotto, and people love it. This risotto. I mean, porcini is such a it's decadent, a strong, rich. Mushroom. Yeah, it's a rich flavor. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Talk to us a little bit about the regional aspect of your food, Chef. I know you're from Naples. Yes. Um, and is that sort of what you would say you specialize in at Carmine's? In my cuisine, it's more, most like uh, South Italy. South Italy. So we specialize on the details, on the original plate, and we put just like, we make the plate fancy, but with original ingredient, with the simple way. You are using probably a lot of local Utah ingredients. Yes. But you're highlighting them in a beautiful Italian fashion. And then you have this amazing wine menu. So we chose to highlight um, some really heavy hitters. We use a lot of special order that uh, it's like wine that you cannot find in the liquor store. We oh, have this that. Barolo Paolo Manzoni Reserva 2013. It's pretty unique. It's oh. amazing wine. 1980 Don Perignon. So this is like older than all of us at this table. Older. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, everything we have, it's like a little bit different, unique. I like to have something that uh, other restaurants don't have. This time last year, it was a super challenging time for everyone, but especially for businesses that would invite the public in. How, how has COVID sort of impacted your business? Yeah, it was really hard for us, but we, uh, we changed a little bit. We do a lot of to go order, take out with the different company like Luba, Uber Eat, uh, DoorDash, Slice. Caviar, all these different. Yes, yeah. and they help us a lot. They make us survive the three months that we was shut down. Yeah, absolutely. And do you do takeout as well? We yes, still, we still yes, do that. Yes, we do a lot of takeout. Now I, I met and I know the true people. They have been supported in a good timing and in a difficult time. As absolutely. And you, and you have adapted so that you can support them as well. And of so course. It's like this beautiful synergy and, and meeting and connecting of people who love food, love community. And we really love them. Love, yeah. I would love to pop back in the kitchen with Chef, if you don't course. mind. Of it's all yours. No Just see the, the, the master orchestrating this beautiful spread. Now it's Chef Carmine. Some people might call you Carmine, but it's Carmine in Italian, it's Carmine, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, Chef. I love it. I just love to know how to really honor your heritage. So, Chef Carmine. So, I apologize if I was calling no you problem, Carmine. No problem. No um, problem. So, yeah. what are you gonna make for us? I'll make uh, like a Chef pasta. Chef pasta is uh, a pin with. Uh, uh, cream, mushroom, and prosciutto. It's pretty popular in Italy. It sounds amazing. All right. Okay. So let's start. So let's do it. Do let's do it. Yeah. I love it. Okay. So let's put a little bit of olive oil. Olive oil. No such thing as canola oil for Italians, yeah, right? Yeah, olive oil olive is oil. really important. So garlic. Okay. A little bit of ham. Some ham. Yes, and mushrooms. Beautiful. Got some okay. different seasonings. Pepper, garlic, salt. Pepper, garlic, and salt, yes. I always love it. Right. Garlic salt has a certain look to it. So we just wait for the pan to yeah, heat up. Yeah, we wait uh, like a minute just for heat it up a little bit. Okay. A little bit uh, the ingredient. Great. Mm. 
And is this something that you might cook for yourself after a long day? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Let's put the pasta inside. Okay. Empty out all the water. Yes. Mm, that is beautiful penne. Yep. The flour, the flavors just sort of marinate together. Yes, with the pasta. Mm -hmm. Let's put a little bit of cream. Okay, so this is just heavy cream? Heavy cream. I love that. <laughs> oh, and yum. Get up a little bit, a little bit of parmesan. Of course. Some freshly grated parm. Italian parsley. Oh. oh, my goodness. That is just decadent. And it's like reverence and, as you're plating. I and like, we don't garnish want to with the parmesan crust that we make here. Yeah, beautiful. A little bit of parsley. A little bit of parsley. And the shaved parmesan. Oh, shaved parmesan. The dish is ready. You do something very special at Carmenet's when somebody orders a bottle of Prosecco or a bottle of champagne. champagne. Yep. And you actually have this saber. It's in the cabinet in the front. Yes. And you're going to saber some champagne for us? Of course. Let's do it. OK. All right, chef. Now you're going to saber this. Yes, do it. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm ready. The first time I've seen this, I'm so excited. You okay. Guys ready? Ready. Oh yes. Let's go. Ooh. This is how Let's we say, celebrate it. This is how we celebrate it at Carmenis and in Italy. Now, um, would we say della salute, chin chin? Chin chin, salute. <laughs>